Hello YouTube, this is The Bucket today, coming at you with a special firearm for The Bucket. Um, when I uh, moved out and was independent, the first purchase, uh, first pistol purchase I ever made was a Ruger. And it was, um, you know, not the most expensive pistol out there, but it was pretty neat to me because uh, it was the first gun I ever purchased. I had owned, I had owned some uh, firearms that were given to me by family members, but this is the first one that I ever went out and I purchased myself. And it was the Ruger P95. Now this isn't the one I purchased, but this is an example of a Ruger P95. And the Ruger P series of pistols are really pretty neat uh, guns. And uh, I wanna give you a little bit of the history of those particular firearms. So the P series pistols, uh, were designed to um, compete for the replacement of the 1911. And while it's called, the first original one was called a P85, the Ruger had not, you know, mastered exactly what they were looking for um, yet. And they actually did not uh, complete it until 1988, which by at that point, two rounds of uh, trials had already happened. And the, the two main contenders for that particular trial were the 92 FS by Beretta and the P226 by Sig Sauer. And while the Ruger pistol did admirably in the trials, you know, at that point, uh, Beretta had already won twice and the Ruger pistol really didn't do anything particularly better than the SIG or the 92FS. So they were so late to the party that uh, they really didn't stand much of a chance to be able to uh, compete for, for the, the, the military contract. But it was a good enough pistol, and Ruger makes a good, inexpensive enough product that it did show some success in some police. Um, I, some different police departments ended up, um, you know, adopting the pistol. The Wisconsin State Patrol, San Diego Police Department, even the Turkish National Police ended up adopting the P85, which was an alloy framed, uh, double action, single action decocker. Um, safety modeled pistol where it had the same lockup, you know, where the lug is the slide and the uh, barrel just, you know, connects directly into the slide. And it had a swinging link in <clears throat> the barrel, just like a, a 1911. And they had a lot of success. There was a couple of hiccups, and they ended up coming out with an upgraded version, and they called it the P85 MK2, and, you know, it was fine, and they ended up rebranding it as the P89, and then... <clears throat> in the u.s market you know back then in the um early 90s late 80s 45 was still really big in the american market so they came out with a p90 to compete with the sig p220 and some other 45 uh, acp guns they were a single stack these are double stack 15 uh, capacity uh, magazine guns and uh the p90 was a single stack eight round plus one firearm and then they started, uh, you know, they came out with a 40 Smith & Wesson called the P91. And then they wanted to compete in the compact style market with the P93. And then they made up full size with the P94. And again, they all had the same things. You know, the, with the 9 millimeters or the 15 plus 1, they had the, um, the were hammer fired, double single action firearms. Most of them came with a safety. Uh, they did, uh, on the P95, they ended up seeing what you saw there. And it P95 came out, and that's the firearm that I have here today for you. And this was kind of unique in the fact that this was the first of the traditional companies that said, you know what, Glock's got something here. The polymer revolution has happened, and uh, you know I need we need to you know you know compete. And polymer is less expensive, and it's lighter, and there's some real benefits to it. And Ruger was the first company with a P95 to come up with a polymer framed, uh, one of those traditional American company guns, polymer frame uh, with uh, steel and steel uh, firearm and making a good quality one. 
you know, Colt had come out with the 2000, and uh, but that was that was much later. And a lot of the first attempts of those American companies to make a, a quality firearm were just wanting. And the P95 was that compact uh, style sized firearm and with a polymer frame. And this version I hear that I have is the P95DC, which is the decocker, kind of what we think of right now as the, if you're gonna have a hammer fired, you want a decocker, no safety, so you're ready to go more pew as soon as you, you know, holster that weapon. So, um, I had bought a P95, mine was a decocker uh, safety version, and I ended up not firing it much, and you know, had, you know, I became more of a gun guy and I ended up enjoying uh, some of my other guns and I ended up trading it off. And uh, when I had an opportunity to pick this particular firearm up, I wanted it to bring to, the, uh, to my bucket uh, followers because this is a great firearm. You know, Ruger sometimes gets a, a bad name as an inexpensive firearm, but you know, this competed, this uh, past the military trials. This is a, a fine firearm. It is a little bit dated, um, you know, for, for what we think of today. The grip, you know, the texture is not very good. Um, you know, people would really hammer on that. You know, it's got that double stack grip. I actually believe this grip is better than a 92FS. I've owned a 92FS. I find this one is a little bit easier to get a grip. You know, you get a good high... Um, purchase on the gun the hammer is not going to have any hammer bite anything like that uh it's just a, a high quality firearm um i, I could kind of cheat and tell you that they shoot really really well i'll still take this to the range review and show you uh, what what types of things that you can do with it uh, mags are still readily available and i'm going to need to get some because ah the one i got was a california compliant 10 round so i'm going to want to end up getting something a little bit gooder than that uh but i want to go ahead and talk to you guys about the disassembly of this particular firearm so um to, to disassemble this firearm there is a little hiccup here and you can see it right here this is the extractor and you're going to want to go ahead well ejector sorry i always want to get those backwards this is the ejector you need to push that down and you can see when you've done it you've done it right and then you can just go ahead and bring that down and it's hard to see here um on my gun but there's a little line right here and you line it up and on my particular frame the line is like completely gone so you just want to go ahead and you can see it right there it's very hard to see but you line it up and you just push this out comes right out slide comes right on off now when they came to the P95, they got rid of the swinging link. So this is going to be more like your traditional, uh, yeah, there's, yeah, there's not a lot that it's like. So you just go ahead and pull that out. You've got a double uh, captive recoil spring, easy to get on and off. And then it just comes out just like any other firearm. <clears throat> it's going to be a good hammer forged barrel. You know, it's got a good feed feed lips. It's not the widest that you've ever seen, but it's been polished up real nice, um, and, it, and it works out really, really well. It's it's a good firearm. Reassembly is really pretty simple. You just go ahead, put it in there. Uh, this type of lockup, I'm not wild about. It actually functions great, but I'm always afraid <laughs> that when you put it in, let me see if I can get an angle on it. I always feel like I don't have it in straight, but it really is. It's very simple to put together. And then it's just kind of a reverse affair um, to go ahead and put this gun back together, line them back up where they were at before, plop her right on in there, and she just goes in. No problems. You want to go ahead and check to make sure everything is operating correctly. And I like that this version kind of has that 80s. Usually you think of it and you see it with a German that has kind of that plum finish. I really like that. I think it's kind of unique. Uh, you know, it, it's just, it's it's a high quality firearm and you can pick these up relatively cheap. Uh, and, and probably the past three or four years, there's been a renaissance of double action, single action, you know, uh, guns that people want to carry. They really like the... Uh, since appendix carry has been big, double action, single action is huge because people, when they holster it, they put their thumb 
on the hammer. So if something gets caught on that trigger, you know, they feel it pushing up and they know to uh, stop holstering their firearm. So there's been a big push of a lot of people going back to that double action, single action uh, mode. And this is a wonderful gun for it. You know, I owned it for years and years and years, never had a failure to feed, never had a failure to extract, no stove pipe and nothing. And they just run really, really well. So I'm excited to get this to the range, to show you guys what she can do, put her through her paces and, uh, let you guys know how wonderful of a firearm this particular gun is. Now, I am a little biased, so I'll probably go and uh, talk to maybe the UGD, maybe the Goat Whisper, see if they'll put some rounds through it to see if they can uh, maybe have a little bit uh, more of a open opinion about the firearm. But I, I got a weird feeling they're, bo they're both going to say it's a great firearm. So if you uh, like what you had to... If you like what I had to say today, go ahead and hit that like button. Shares are always well appreciated. Um, feel free to subscribe. I would love the, each and every person that has subscribed to the channel. I love that you're helping me support. And you stay classy, YouTube. Little baby bucket, do you want to live in California? No. Why? Because I'm not a compliment.